Clarence Miller was raised in Ann Arbor, Michigan in a professor's family as a Unitarian. By herself, she got confirmed and then attended a high Episcopal church. She was enchanted by the formality of the ritual, the boy choir, and the traditional church music. Her career in dance began at Juilliard, followed by years of teaching at universities and in studios in New York City, as well as a five-year stint performing with her own small dance company. From age 18 to 43, she never set foot in church again, claiming to be an agnostic. She was never one to easily ask for help, but she needed it from AA. And that experience led her back to an unassailable belief in a higher power, God, and 40 years of sobriety. Age 43, with two children through college, Constance and her husband Bob wanted a simpler, more peaceful life, so they bought a farm in central Pennsylvania. He to grow 250 acres of Christmas trees, and she to grow and know herbs, which led her to 13 years as a practicing clinical herbalist. Both Millers felt there was something missing in their lives, an historical Quaker meeting house nearby fit them perfectly. For 25 years, they were active members there and at the Friends School. When moving to Jacksonville six years ago, she and Bob searched for a faith community and discovered this Unitarian Universalist Church. They became members in 2018. <clears throat> Except for the Quakers' emphasis on God, all other social justice issues felt very familiar. Please welcome Constance Miller for our meditation, followed by her, her speaking to us about who are the Quakers, what are their beliefs, and how do they worship. Thank you. I, I'm still a member of, the, of my meeting up there, so if I say we instead of they when I'm explaining the Quakers, that's why. Um, when you have meditation here in the Unitarian Church, it bothers me because they say they're going to do a meditation and somebody keeps talking and talking and talking. And <laughs> for me, it's quite something else. So I'd like you to experience two or three minutes of that something else. And I would like you to put both feet on the ground, sit up straight, put your hands in the lap, and close your eyes. I want you to take nice, big, easy breaths and watch the breath go in and out. And try to find something in your mind that's a scene of a quiet place. For me, it's the ocean as the sun is coming up and the sunshine is, is uh, shining towards the sand. It almost looks like you can look into eternity. If a shopping list pops into your mind, just let it come in and go out. A friend of mine reminded me 
that it's customary to begin a speech with something funny. But Quakers are not thought of as funny people. <laughs> they're, they're kind of serious and sincere and forthright. But I did think of something amusing. Our area was settled by Quakers, and there are still two log cabin meeting houses that are laid down or no longer in use, <clears throat> as well as our 1836 brick meeting house, which replaced our original log cabin, which was 1792. So that whole grove and the cemetery goes back a long, long way. There are many school groups and historical societies and tourists who want a tour and, his, and to learn historically about the Quakers in the area. So one, of, one friend, one of our members, is a history buff and he takes them around. He tells the story of finishing the tour and everyone is very attentive and, and, and inter interested. Of course, they get a little bit mixed up with Amish and Mennonite, which we're not, obviously. We're <laughs> and, but <laughs> almost inevitably, somebody pipes up. And so are there any Quakers still left alive? <laughs> <laughs> so he says that you're looking at one, and we have a, quite a, a large congregation that worships here every Sunday. The formal name of the organization the Quakers founded is the Religious Society of Friends, and we're often called Friends rather than Quakers. It was founded by George Fox, who was only 23 years old at that time. And in 1649, as he walked the moors of Northern England, right near the Scottish border, he had a revelation and experienced a strong personal connection with God. God was speaking to him and through him during a time of utter quiet. This happened with no set prayer or minister to interpret for him. And historically, this occurred during the upheaval of the Reformation when many people were rebelling against the rigid formality and the rules and, <clears throat> and uh, repetitive prayer in established religion of the time. Um, the pilgrims were part of that movement. And in England, there were violent changes of rulers and of state religion. So what follows was part of that revolutionary upheaval. Fox thought, because of his experience, that worship could be pared down to the simplicity of groups of people meeting in an unadorned meeting house. His revelation on the Moors had been mystical, and mysticism is actually a direct and immediate experience of the divine, and that's what he was very powerful for him. So we thought, why couldn't groups of worshipers get that same religion, religious connection to God that I had had? The first meetings were small, and they believed and were trying to reconstruct the way the very early Christians met together in small groups. After all, Jesus had said, Whenever two or three friends are gathered together in my name, there am I among you. They called themselves at that time children of the light or brethren of the truth. Like the apostles, many went out to find co converts to their way of worship. And by 1652, these guys were pretty um, successful. It was actually a movement. <clears throat> they adopted the name Friends, or the Religious Society of Friends. The term Quaker actually originally was derogatory and referred to worshipers getting so moved and filled with the spirit that they would shake, they would quake. The, fr 
friends believe that there is God in everyone meant to them that all people are equal. They wouldn't doff their hats to the betters, nor would they address them by their rank or their title. This was a very bad thing to do in England, and among other things that they did, Quakers landed in jail a lot. <clears throat> what they did was address everyone as the and when I first went to Quaker meeting for the first few years, there were two old Quaker ladies who would still thee and thou you. How is it with thee this morning? <laughs> and it was lovely, I like that. This idea extended to the equality of races, of economic standing, of religion, and of which sex you were because women had strong voices and roles of, no, of leadership in friends meeting for business and with social justice issues especially. Nonviolence, or our peace testimony, is a very strong belief, and friends will not take up arms in a war. There was a man in our meeting and when the Civil War broke out, he found in his conscience that he must go and fight for the North. Well, <laughs> we didn't cut him any slack. We read him out of meeting. When he came back, he founded a church almost next door. <laughs> and anyway, that, I mean, that just kind of shows you of how, how strong our belief is. Uh, Men were registered as COs or conscientious objectors, but nevertheless would be stretcher bearers or cooks or medics or however other way they could serve other than taking up arms because they would not fight. Friends believe in media mediation to take away the causes of misunderstandings that lead to war, at war and they're very good at, at it. Even children in, in friend schools learn to work out their disputes using med mediation, and it's really heartwarming to see them be so efficient and good at it. And communities use this, this uh, kind of training to help settle disputes that really don't need to be in the court, you know, between neighbors and so forth. And the nice thing is, at the end, each side owns the um, decision instead of one winner and one loser. Friends got a firm foothold in America in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania because Charles II gave Admiral Penn the land and that was as a reward for winning a naval battle for him. But Pennsylvania was administered by his son, William, and William was a Quaker. And Quaker wanted, uh, Penn wanted to try a religious experiment. No guns, no violence, no army. Um, and unlike many other co colonies, all religions were welcome to settle there. And they did. <laughs> yeah. Still to this day, we're just filled with Amish and Mennonite and brethren and anything else you can think of. <clears throat> Friends may worship quietly, but there certainly were firebrands among them. They were leaders in the ab abolition against slavery, leaders at Seneca Lake among su suffragettes, in the temperance movement, and they pushed for voters' rights and, re and registration and, in and integration and anti-war and worked for peace and prison reform. A lot of us during the Iraq War spent years and years on street cor corner once, once a week with our signs, and you'd be amazed how many honks we got and thumbs up against war. For friends, we just don't tolerate the Christian belief that 
you're born in sin and need to be saved and baptized. We don't believe that. Because if a man sin, we believe he has the capacity to learn, to reform, and to come back to God in this life. Uh, we are also consider, consider ourselves stewards of the earth because God, uh, the earth is God's creation and active in environmental movements of all kinds. As a matter of fact, William Penn required all landowners to keep at least one-fifth of their land in woodland. There's no minister, no staff whatsoever. So you can imagine the <laughs> volunteers. Um, we minister to each other, actually. Indeed, when there's a Quaker wet wedding, they marry each other. And they do that by making promises in front of the gathered group, who then sign the marriage certificate as witnesses to those promises. And the certificate is gorgeous. It's usually about this big and has beautiful artwork around it and lines for each person who's, who's witnessed, it, witnessed, witnessed the ceremony. And in fact, in, in Pennsylvania, you didn't have to go get a license because they know that Quaker's word is their bond and it was only recently that they, ch they changed that. <clears throat> Friends need no intercessor to translate and transmit the word of God. Rather than, rather than being given words about God, friends wanted to commune personally with God himself. And when people ask, used to ask me, this is a very informal way to explain it, what are you doing during that time? And, and I say, well, we really believe that you can't know God's will unless you shut up and listen. But we do this, <clears throat> communing with God, by sitting quietly, clearing our minds, centering down, and looking for the light within. And the light is either God or the conscience or the soul. Indeed, whenever anybody gets sick, I will tell them, I will hold you in the light. We're directed, it's a tradition, to do some spiritual reading during the week so that you're just, your mind is ready when you go to, to meeting for worship, but you're not to prepare remarks ahead of time. So it's not quiet all the time, really. <laughs> when someone rises to speak in meeting, he or she has such a strong leading from God that they can't not share it. I mean, you're just sitting there and you're, oh, do I dare? Is this important enough? And, ever, and then poof, up you go and you said it and say it. Um, sometimes it's a sort of a prayer. Sometimes an inspiring idea recently learned. And sometimes it's very moving and profound. But many more meetings are con conducted in complete silence. And sometimes there's such a deep spiritual energy that's uh, shared by the group that you can kind of hear it, feel it zinging around and zinging around. And when we break meeting and and are talking to each other often will say, I was thinking about such and such, and they'll say, I was thinking about the same thing. Um, so that's called a gathered meeting. I did want to say that that's not all to, to, to a way of us getting together on Sundays. After coffee, we go in and we have a speaker just like you do. Friends, don't take the Bible as the literal word of God or the absolute truth. We see it as a 
wonderful um, document of its time. Instead, friends believe Jesus is only one of the world's most important teachers. That through, throughout history and today, there's con what we call continual revelation. So it could be from other religions, from history, from current times, people like Gandhi, Buddha, Martin Luther King, also words from ministers, rabbis, priests, imams, so continual revelation. Friends conduct business and make decision in a manner that can be really frustrating. <laughs> it's consensus. And that means that every single person has to agree with, for anything to move forward. And I do have to tell you that our meeting house, 1836, um, was due for some changes. And a, a man, an old guy in our meeting, Bill Erdman, had the idea that a meeting house is a holy place that has to be kept exactly the way it was built, and it must not change. And every month, a meeting for business, this would come up, we need to do such and such. And he'd say, nope, I won't stand aside. It took many, many, many months for him finally to allow this to stand aside and allow this to happen. And it was flush toilets. <laughs> and the year was 1979. <laughs> so. Friends value simplicity, and this is reflected in the very spare meeting houses that they build. Um, and you might be interested in what kind of people are Quakers. I can only uh, speak for my own meeting, uh, but the kind of people who um, were attracted were <sighs> professions like teacher, social worker, organic farmers, artists, writers, actors, professors, librarians, probably like a lot of you. We had only one Quaker businessman, and our one lawyer was the legal aid lawyer for the county. So, a little bit different. And friends have very, very early valued education. Greenwood Friends School, which was pre-cut pre-K through eighth grade, is, is 40 years old and is under the care of our meeting up in Pennsylvania. My husband was chair of its board of trustees for 15 years, a hard job when you're trying to run a, a private school in a rather poor area. <laughs> We've watched the school turn out students who are creative, curious, they love learning and exploring things and they know how to live the peace testimony using med mediation in their everyday lives, lives. It's fun to watch them from kindergarten all the way up and get high school and college and so forth, and they've turned out to be spectacular human beings. Philadelphia's most respected college prep schools are friend schools. And in Washington, D.C., the Obama and Carter daughters attended Scattergood Friends School. After the Civil War, Friends made it a very important goal to help educated free slaves. And I know that one of those schools is north of here on one of the Gullah Islands. So that's it, except for our strong anti-war, very strong anti-war emphasis. Most of the Quaker social justice work is very similar to Unitarians, as is the feeling of community, cooperation, and volunteerism. So I feel very comfortable here and decided that my deep belief in God is something I can get from quiet meditation by myself. Thank you.